Hi everybody, so apparently somebody managed to burn down their flat with a plant pot heater. It was on the BBC News. Two things occurred to me. One was the safety sallies are going to have a field day with it, and that's a real shame. Two, this guy was clearly not somebody who should be allowed out with a box of matches. And three, maybe we ought to come up with a safety burner design, because Remember, there are two parts to any heater. There's the enclosure that it sits in, which is supposed to give you a degree of safety in that you don't wander into the burner, and then the burner itself. Now, a burner, by its very name, should tell you it burns. So, if you're doing something dumb with it, yeah, it's going to burn your house down. Of course it is. It's a burner. But you can do things to make it safer. But it's safe in the same sense that a car is safe. I mean, it's not safe. You have to be aware, and remember, I did a video called Playing With Fire, which is telling you all about that safety stuff you ought to be looking at. So if you're thinking of doing these things, watch that video. If you don't watch that video, well, you've only got yourself to blame, I think. But anyway, thinking about the burner, the burner unit itself, there's some really simple stuff you can do to make it safer. One thing is, make it broader than it is tall, and it's difficult to knock it over if it's that way around. The other thing is, don't expose all of that liquid to the flame. Now, sometimes, of course, we have been doing that, and yeah, you know, it's fine, it's in a clean closure, and there's not much of it. But sometimes, when you get a lot of liquid, then exposing all that to a flame is not only um, scary, but positively dangerous. So I thought I'd design a burner that had a liquid reservoir that was not exposed to the flame. First thing, we need a tin. I found this with a Christmas gift in it, actually. It was a horrible Christmas gift, and it was only a couple of quid, but it's a stainless steel tin, flat and square. It's awesome. That's going to be the basis of our burner because it closes gas tight, which is pretty cool. Then we're going to need some of this. This is microbore copper tube. 8mm outside diameter, and you can buy it to put it in like wire. So what you need is four 2cm sections. There we go. Cut them off with a pipe cutter. There we go. So I've got four two centimetre sections and a tin with a closing lid. Obviously you can make this to any size you want. This is the size I've chosen, but bigger is fine, smaller is fine. This comes in a whole range of diameters, 8, 10, 15, 22 mil. All of that's gonna be fine. I'm just taking a small tin and four of these. What we need to do, flare the edge of these. To flare them, I've stuck them in the chuck. I'm going to turn it on and jam a screwdriver in there. You could do this as equally with a drill. There we go. Four of them. What I've got here is a block of steel with an 8mm hole in it. Drop your piece of pipe in there and hit it. And that will flatten out your flange. So, take your tin, remove the lid, mark out the lid. Now, I'm going to have four burner heads per box, and so I've marked it out with four. Whatever's good enough for you and whatever you want, I'm going to do four. And we need to drill it out at 8mm, but don't drill it out straight away at 8mm. You'll tear through this tin, so drill it out of four and then eight. So, when you've drilled them out, take these, put them with the flange to the bottom. So they're like that. And then you will need these. These are olives, 8mm olives, and they will go over those pipes there. You put it back into the hole and hit it so the two cramp against each other. Like that. When we've done that, we have to feed in some kind of wick material. Now, viewers of the channel will know I love this stuff, which is carbon felt. 
I happen to have a lot of carbon felt because I had to buy it when I was doing battery research, but any wick material will do. You just need to feed a bit of wicking up there. And of course, that can be anything, torn jeans, bits of bandage, actual wick that you've bought, Kevlar wick or this carbon felt wick. Any wick will do. You feed it into the four until you get that with four little burners and the wick there. And they obviously go into the tin like that. OK, so we've gone from this to this. Now, obviously, this shape of tin, well, it can be any shape you like. The number of burners, as many as you want. The key is this little joining technique, because now we're ready to put a bit of fuel in there and light that up. <laughs> and we'll just give that a second for the wicks to soak up the fuel. OK, I've left it for about a minute. Let's light it. There we go. <laughs> now, this is a generic burner. When we're thinking about heating, there's two bits to it, OK? There's the burner bit, which is the bit that we're looking at here, and then the enclosure that it goes in, because you can't have something like that sitting around. You have to put it into an enclosure, and that's something that people very often forget. We've done the burner to show you how you can make a burner like this, and then obviously how to change that burner. What we've got to do yet is the enclosure that such a burner would go in, because that burner by itself, this particular one actually is not so bad because it's so much across the bottom, it's very low, it's very flat, and so it's pretty hard to knock that over. But the ones where they're taller, you can knock them over unless they're in an enclosure. So, there's a pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and in inverted commas, safe burner. I mean, there's no such thing as a safe burner, it's an open flame, but it's safer than lots of other styles of burners. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. We've got 101 uses for that. And please do remember to like and subscribe. That's nice. And to put it out. <laughs> <laughs>